something happened last year, two things really, and two different groups took huge offense to these events. The anti-Gamergate folks saw some accusations of shabby goings-on between developers and game journalists. They saw that morph explosively into these horrific threats to women. The pro-Gamergate side, they saw that the press seemed to announce the end of traditional gaming. And both groups took huge offense to those events. That's what started all this. But here it is months later, and what we see has emerged are really two narratives. The anti-Gamergate folks say that gamers are childishly resistant to change and just can't bear the thought of gaming being more inclusive of others, meaning, you know, women, transgender, queer folk, probably because they're misogynist or prejudiced in some way. The pro-Gamergate folks say that there is a kind of a crony gaming press and marketing complex that is rewarding some developers for reasons of identity instead of because of the quality of their games and that if this continues, it could have a bad effect on the future of gaming. If both groups believe in their own way that they're fighting for a better future of gaming, concentrating on misogyny and harassing of women is not helping at all. It would be like if you were in favor of sustainability, for example, and every time you wanted to discuss sustainability, the industry people and the press, they just want to talk about eco-terrorists who drive spikes into trees to injure lumberjacks. Now, you know that that is part of the discussion, but it isn't a very important part of the discussion. Really, it's just a few jerks doing something really, really bad. But nevertheless, you know, every article on sustainability, it starts with an explanation of how tree spiking works. And then one lumberjack describing how he's thinking of leaving the industry and he's proud of those lumberjacks who are staying and he's going to be a VIP at the conference talking about being a victim of eco-terrorists. And you, who just want to improve sustainability, you now have to spend 90% of your time addressing what these idiot eco-terrorists are doing. So it's kind of like that. So instead of addressing the concerns of responsible pro gay voices, they continue to talk only about the harassment of women. And in their public statements, they lump us in indiscriminately, all the pro gamer gay voices, with the actions and even the motives of the anonymous jerks who keep harassing women. Now, if the industry is truly trying to elevate the art of gaming by being more inclusive, they've gone about it in a way that's generating a catastrophically bad response from its traditional fan base. I hope you'll ask why it is that the anti-Gamergate folks almost unanimously wish this would all go away, while at the same time, the pro-Gamergate folks are trying to bring more and more people into the discussion.